Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, and today we're going to talk about uh, the movie schedule going up for the first half of 2021. Uh, so basically from, well, more or less actually from March up until early July. Um, because there's actually been a statement that has, been, that has come out that basically uh, there have been several movie executives um, although one specifically, although I don't believe that one was actually named, that basically said that everything leading up to Top Gun 2, which is set to release on July 2nd, um, all of that stuff is apparently fluid in terms of what that release date is going to look like, what those release dates are going to look like. Um, because everything that is in that time frame is apparently up for movement again, similar to what happened last year. So we could see another pushback of maybe something along the lines of about six months. Um, or we could see those films maybe peppered in over the summer or maybe other films shifted um but i'm going to go over those major titles um their release dates uh if they're going to be simultaneously released on streaming platforms and maybe just you know my own thoughts of maybe if these films could go directly to streaming or vod um if the studios decide not to move the release date again um but we're going to go into uh this little list here and the list starts off we're looking at the early part of march um and the early part of march we have two um Excuse me. We have two movies that are being released on March 5th, which is a Friday. Uh, Chaos Walking, uh, which is the uh, the Tom Holland and uh, Daisy Ridley led uh, film that's based off a uh, young adult novel, I believe, kind of similar to a Hunger Games type of thing in terms of like the readership of that book. Um, but basically, that was a film that was actually shelved because executives thought it was literally unwatchable. Um, so that is going to theaters, so I'm expecting that to bomb terribly. Um, then you have uh, Raya and the Last Dragon, which is the latest uh, entry from, I believe it's Disney Animation Studios. I don't think it's Pixar. Um, it's either one or the other. I can't remember because they're kind of... They, 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 they kind of, Disney kind of disguises their own uh, their own Disney Animation Studio stuff as Pixar sometimes. Uh, you know, they don't widely advertise it, but it is kind of disguised as that. Um, and that is actually supposed to have a simultaneously a simultaneous release on Disney Plus in addition to its theatrical release on March 5th. Now, I think that one is probably the most likely one um, that is going to wind up going direct to streaming because it's an animated film. Um, it's already been pushed back once. It was originally supposed to be aired on November 25th of this year, or previous year, I should say, because it is 2021, even though it's kind of hard to distinguish the two years at this point. Um, so that one, I think, could go direct to streaming, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I think that Disney, if it gets pushed back, I think Disney might try and just dump it onto streaming on the, tw on the 5th. Um, now we move on to the next weekend, which is March 12th. Now that has The King's Man, uh, which is actually the uh, prequel to the Kingsman series, those series of films. It's not Kingsman 3, it's actually a prequel. I think they're doing a Kingsman 3 as well. Um, so that's going on. That also has uh, the release of Cherry, which is going on Apple TV+, Plus. it's not going to have a theatrical release, but I thought I'd just mention that because I did do a, a trailer breakdown of that. Um, and now we move down. So there's really not, not too much on the 19th. Um, and then when we get to March 26th, that is a big one, and that is Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, here's the, the one thing I have about this. is, And th this is the weird part to me, is that we haven't gotten a trailer for Godzilla vs. Kong yet. That trailer is actually coming this Sunday. Uh, but it, it's been almost... it's. Uh, basically, almost by the time that trailer comes out, it will be under two months until the release of the film. And this is a film that has been delayed, I believe. I don't think this film was actually slated to come out on March 26th. I think this was actually delayed a little bit or was at least shifted around. Um, so I'm kind of curious why we haven't seen a trailer of it when we probably should have seen a trailer about six months out. Um, but again, it's kind of a clusterfuck in Hollywood right now, so I don't really necessarily think that that's a bad thing. I think maybe just one trailer is enough. You know, a lot of a lot of movie studios uh, like to push out you know, roughly three trailers for big tentpole films. Usually, you have an early t uh, trailer, like a teaser or something. Then you have your second trailer, which is kind of a lot of the meat of it, and then your last trailer, which is usually is, is called the final trailer, quote unquote. Um, you know, that, that's a whole other issue. But uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is also being released simultaneously on HBO Max. Uh, so, again, that's another one. And that's also, I think, probably the first really big movie of this year that's going to be coming out. That's the one that everybody is expecting is going to be a smash hit. 
um, in terms of uh, maybe not box office because obviously the box office numbers are going to be a little wonky this time around, but um, it would be interesting to see what they actually look like by Mar by the end of March. Um, now we move into early April, April 2nd, which is the following weekend. Again, this is kind of strange to me, even though I guess these films aren't technically in the same uh, – in the same vein, is No Time to Die, which is the uh, last James Bond movie featuring Daniel Craig. And that movie, again, has been delayed twice now. It was originally supposed to come out in, I believe, March of last year. Or maybe not March. I think it was actually April or maybe a little bit further on. And then it was moved back to November. Um, and then it was moved again uh, when it was obvious that they were not going to be able to make that November release date. And they also did not have very much confidence in it because of the whole fallout with Tenet. Um, so you have that. Um, that's really the big one there. Nothing really on the 9th for the most part. And then April 16th, um, you have the Mortal Kombat reboot, which is coming out. Now, again, we're supposed to be getting a trailer for that relatively soon as well. Um, I'd be curious how that looks, but that one's kind of up in the air. That's also getting a standard uh, theatrical release. It's not going uh, direct to streaming. Same thing. It's not going to streaming simultaneously or anything like that. Same thing with No Time to Die. Um, now we go to April 23rd, which is the last weekend in April that we're going to be seeing stuff. Um, and really, that's going to be A Quiet Place 2, which, again, that thing's been kind of in development for a little while. That got pushed back. Um, but really, that's pretty much what is coming out that weekend. But weird weekend for a horror movie. That's kind of my thing. It's like, I don't really understand why that's a weekend for a horror movie. Then we go into May, and this is really when we start getting into the meat of the, uh, of the summer schedule. Usually it's May all the way through... Labor Day usually is when the summer movie season is. So the first big one we have is Black Widow, which again, that's another one I could see being pushed off to Disney Plus if they have to move that date again, because that is a full year, I believe, away from what its original date was uh, in 2020. Um, then you go into May 14th, uh, not really a whole lot there. May 21st, you have Spiral from the Book of Saw, which has been uh, kind of advertised a fair amount. Also, you have Free Guy, which is the action comedy from Ryan Reynolds, which is about you know video game worlds and stuff. Um, again, I did a trailer breakdown of both of those. Um, so again, kind of weird that you're doing uh, a Saw movie in May, but okay, whatever. Um, then you go and uh, there's really nothing on the 25th, which is a – actually, that's, that's a Tuesday. Um, but May 28th is when you have Fast and Furious 9 is going to be coming out. Now, again, that was delayed an entire year from its original release date. It's been sitting on a shelf. Uh, those, those guys have been banging out uh, freaking advertising budgets over there. Uh, I don't even want to see what the advertising budget was for that damn thing, but it was probably something very, very, very hefty. Um now, as we continue on down there, uh, that's pretty much what we're looking at for May, and now we move into June. Uh, now, the first weekend in June, again, you got a couple of them. You got the next Conjuring movie, which I don't even know why that's on there. Um, and then you go to June 11th, which is your first big one for June, and that is Ghostbusters Afterlife. And again, this is one that was – all of these movies have been delayed. I shouldn't even have to say that at this point, but for most of them have been delayed, I should say. Um, but Ghostbusters Afterlife is June 11th. That one's kind of on the tail end, so you know that's a, that's a ways away. So the next few movies I'm going to mention are probably not going to be moved as significantly if they even are moved at all. Um, but like I said, Ghostbusters Afterlife that's a big one for Sony Pictures. They're really trying to get the uh, goodwill back with the fans on that after the 2016 one and the whole debacle that followed it. Um, so I'm actually interested to see that. I did like the first trailer. I think that's interesting. I'd like to see if they have another trailer uh, a little closer to when the film's coming out, if they're going to show us anything new, uh, if they've done anything with that delay, you know, if they've added anything or, or tweaked some things with the movie. Um, then we have June 18th, we have Pixar's Luca, which I don't believe I've actually seen that as of yet, uh, or anything with that, so I'm not 100% familiar on that. But then when we move to the following Friday, which is June 25th, then we have J Venom 2, which is also known as Venom Let There Be Carnage. That is going to be a direct theatrical release. That is not going to uh, any kind of video on demand or anything like that. Again, that's coming out of Sony. So Sony actually has two big movies uh, that are going to be premiering in June. So you have uh, June 11th, you have Ghostbusters 
and then June 25th, you will have Venom 2. Uh, now, again, Venom 2 has been hyped up. I would really like to see a trailer for this. I think we're probably going to wind up seeing it within the next month or so, uh, maybe another one or two leading up to it. Um, but like I said, I don't think that one is going to necessarily be moved. And then that's really the last big release of June, and then we go right into July. And when we get into July, that's the first weekend, July 2nd, or the July 4th holiday weekend when we see Top Gun Maverick. Um, and then after that, we have some other ones that are going to be, you know, again, it's the mainstay of the summer, so we have a bunch that are coming after that. You know, J July 9th, you have uh, Shang-Chi, which is the, the next Marvel film. Uh, July 16th, you have Space Jam 2. I'm going to hate myself that fucking weekend. I know that for a fact. Um, and then, you know, a few other ones leading down. You also have Disney's Jungle Cruise with uh, Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt and a few other movies. But um, those are probably the least likely to be moved as you get into the later part of the year. Um, now, like I said, some of those films are going to be going uh, to theaters with a simultaneous release on HBO Max or Disney Plus or whatever streaming service ha happens to be connected to them. Um, and that, again, that's probably going to be a thing for at least the early part of this year until theaters kind of make somewhat of a rebound enough where studios feel more comfortable with it because the wonder woman 1984 release even though that movie is garbage um it did make a decent amount of money, and Warner Brothers did express that they were excited for the amount of money that it did wind up making at the global box office for a Christmas release. Um, it is nothing close to what it was before COVID, but it is getting somewhat better. Um, so I would see that I, I think there's a lot more films or a lot more studios that are going to be taking risks by putting films in theaters. Again, most of the most of the titles that I read off, especially the Sony titles, um, are not receiving a simultaneous streaming release. It's mostly just the ones that are put out by the bigger companies like Disney or Warner Brothers uh, because they have streaming services that are related to that. But even then, um, you know, Marvel, the Marvel films are not slated to go direct to, to uh, Disney Plus. It's really only the, the Pixar movies, I think. That, are, that they're trying to do that with right now because I think they did it with Soul um, earlier, last, late last year and they're also doing it uh, like I said, they're going to be doing it with Raya the Last Dragon as well. I do not know if they're going to be doing it with the Pixar film though, the new one, uh, Luca. Uh, that might wind up uh, becoming a Disney Plus simultaneous release as well, but they haven't made that announcement yet and I don't think it was made at the investor day either. Um, but that covers the first half of 2021 uh, for those movie releases and and those, like I said, those are the major ones. Uh, I think that a lot of them, a lot, especially the ones that are from the major studios and the ones that have been moved multiple times, I think those movies are probably, if they have to get moved again, they're probably just going to get dumped onto streaming services and maybe they'll get a limited theatrical release. Um, but as for the rest of them, the ones going more towards July, I think they will get traditional theatrical releases and then you'll have the home video and the streaming and stuff later on. But like I said, that's just my opinion on these things. I want to know what yours are. Are you excited for any of those films? Do you want to see them? Um, do you think think that it's better for them to have a simultaneous release, to be released direct to streaming, to be released traditionally in theaters like they, they would be normally. Um, you know, Put your thoughts in the comments below. As usual, I like to read them. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?